Hello, it's Alex and welcome to Hey Little Thrifter. Today I'm going to be talking about some non-fiction and recently I shared a video talking about this book, Satanic Panic, which is a collection of essays all about the Satanic Panic era of the 1980s and yeah, that video seemed to go down pretty well so I thought I would follow it up and share some other non-fiction books that might be in the same kind of world as this. So I know as a horror fan I'm also a fan of other, I guess, weird um, subject matter. I can't really think of a better term for it but you know what I mean. So some of the books I'm going to talk about are specifically horror related and others are just, yeah, somewhat in the same world. So I just wanted to share some of these non-fiction coffee table type books that you might also be interested in. So I went to my bookshelves and pulled out a bunch of books that I thought would be interesting to share with you and it turns out I'd gotten together 13 books. Of course it was 13. Why wouldn't it be 13? Um, but yeah, that was total coincidence but quite fitting, I think. First up, this one, I will leave a link to my video all about this book specifically down below if you haven't seen it, feel free to go check it out. Next up is Paperbacks from Hell by Grady Hendrix and Will Erickson. I'm sure you are already aware of this one, but I wanted to share it anyway. This is all about horror fiction in the 70s and 80s during its heyday and this is just such a fantastic collection of the artwork and it goes through various different subgenres. So yeah, it's just a really well put together book. If you're a fan of the genre then this is a must have. Next up is Clive Barker's A to Z of Horror and Clive Barker is a well-known horror author and back in the 90s he had a TV series on the BBC in the UK going through the alphabet in relation to horror and horror related things and teenage me was obsessed with it and I got the book and this was I think 96 or 97 so we let's see this came out 97 so this was like kind of pre-internet we had like really just started getting the internet but it wasn't as accessible as we know it today and it wasn't anything like we know it today you know there just weren't the websites and information that we take for granted today so as a budding horror fan I didn't have endless information at my fingertips and when this book came out this was like my bible this was my internet so this is just a fantastic book with a wide range of topics like film and film directors, authors and their books, artists and artwork and yeah I just spent so many hours looking through this book over and over again and reading everything and looking at all the pictures. Without this book I'm not sure what I would have done really but this was just a real eye-opener for me. So yeah this one will always be a really special book to me because of that um, it was one that just yeah made a real impact on me as a teenager. Next up continuing on the horror theme we have The Art of the Nasty by Nigel Wingrove and Mark Morris. This is all about the video nasties and other related horror films. It's again just a fantastic collection of artwork um, I just can't get enough of these kind of things and it breaks it down into different sections um, like which ones were specifically on the UK's bans list and then other ones that somehow didn't get banned even though they may have been worse than the ones that did get banned. It's yeah a really interesting subject. This is a brilliant one if you're into horror films and artwork and definitely if you're interested in the video nasty era. Okay, moving on to some vampires. We've got The Vampire Book, The Encyclopedia of the Undead by J. Gordon Melton. This was another one that was like my encyclopedia 
back in the 90s um, without the internet. So this is literally just an encyclopedia of vampire related stuff and some black and white pictures in there. And yeah, this was just one that I loved flicking through. And then at the back, it also has a list of vampire novels, vampire films. Um, I think it also has um, like vampire plays and opera and ballet in here as well. So yeah, a huge wealth of information. Uh, this was a really well put together book. This originally came out in sometime in the mid 90s maybe. Okay, this one was 94. So yeah, maybe a bit outdated now because that's, you know, 20 odd years um, that it's missing. But obviously the information in here is still really relevant and it's a really great resource. And then we have not one, but two books about Countess Elizabeth Bathory. She was known as Countess Dracula. She was a Hungarian countess in the 17th century who was said to bathe in the blood of virgins in order to retain her beauty and her youth. And there's two books here. We've got Dracula Was a Woman in Search of the Blood Countess of Transylvania by Raymond T. McNally and Countess Dracula, The Life and Times of Elizabeth Bathory, The Blood Countess by Tony Thorne. And yeah, both of these were really interesting to me. Again, these were ones I had as a teen and I just found interesting. Um, this particular edition was 1984 and yeah, it has a bunch of pictures in here which is always great and then the other one Countess Dracula this was actually my sister's so hey I have your book I don't know why but I have it in case you were wondering and this one is was a bit more recent this one came out 97 okay not that recent but there you go and this one um, has a few sections of illustrations and stuff. It's been a long while since I've read either of these um, but I remember really enjoying them uh, when I did read them so yeah if you're interested in reading more about this woman then here are two good options. And now moving on to some more I guess general non-fiction um, but with some darker subject matter. This one is Gothic, 400 Years of Excess, Horror, Evil and Ruin by Richard Davenport Hines. And this, yeah, like it says, it just goes through what is Gothic over the years and I'm losing the cover there. Um, but yeah, this one again has some pictures inside. It goes through various different things. I confess, I don't think I ever read this one cover to cover but I kind of dipped in and out of it from time to time and I'm sure it is a really great read if you were to read it cover to cover. Maybe I should pick it up and properly read it one of these days. And I think the rest of these are, yeah, more like oddities than specifically horror. This is Bibliodicy, which is based on a blog by PK, whoever that is, I'm not entirely sure, but he has, he or she, I'm not actually sure, has a blog with um, archives of just various weird stuff, um, cool pictures and illustrations and stuff. Um, so yeah, check out the website and if you want it in book form you can go get the book. Uh, this originally came out in 2007 and yeah, I just really like the cover with these like skeletons and stuff in the gold there. Um, so yeah. This is just a cool one to flick through and look at the pictures really, um, but there are details about them as well, so that's really interesting. Next we have Special Cases, Natural Anomalies and Historical Monsters by Rosamund Purcell. This is a collection detailing various people and things over the years that would have been thought of as monsters. Um, and yeah, it's just a really interesting collection. Again, lots of great pictures and stuff and just a fascinating topic. Now we have a bit of taxidermy. This is Walter Potter's Curious World of Taxidermy 
by Dr. Pat Morris with Joanna Ebenstein and a foreword by Sir Peter Blake. And Walter Potter was a famous Victorian taxidermist. He made various tableaus of squirrels and bunnies and birds and kittens and yeah, if you like that sort of thing then you definitely should go check out this book. Um, yeah, for me another fascinating topic and a really great book. Next up is one for you X-Files fans. This is the X-Files Book of the Unexplained, Volume 2. For some reason I only had Volume 2. This is by Jane Goldman and yeah, it just goes through various different topics that are covered in the TV series and again lots of really interesting subject matter like vampires and Native American wonders and obviously UFOs and other strange phenomenon. And again, this was one like the Clive Barker's A to Z of Horror that I would just read through over and over again. And for some reason, this book absolutely stinks. Like, I'm not even kidding. It smells like that really strong fish glue. And it smelled like that when I'd got it. And I'm not sure how I spent so many hours going through it years ago, but I did. I guess I just got used to it after a while. And it still smells all these years later. Like, how is that even possible? But yeah, there you go. A great book nonetheless. And last up, ending on a spooky note, we have Ghosts, The Illustrated History by Peter Haining. And I did show this in another video recently. It was the Halloween in July book tag. And yeah, this was a book that I had as a kid and it just goes through the history of the ghost through the years. And it has loads of great photos and illustrations in here. Yeah, this was the kind of thing that would give me nightmares as a kid. I absolutely loved it. And this is a bit of an older book. It was originally published in the 70s, um, oh, 1975, but yeah, still a really great book and an interesting collection. So those were just several books that I thought if you were interested in that Satanic Panic book I showed before, you might also be interested in some of these. Let me know if you already have any of these or if you're thinking of picking any of them up. Or let me know if you have any other recommendations, kind of non-fiction wise, that you think I should check out. I do have a bunch more, like, coffee table books. If you're interested, I could always do a video on those. I have a bunch of art books and photography, and also a bunch of, like, medical and anatomy related stuff. So if you're interested in seeing a video on any of those, I would love to share them with you. Just let me know. Thank you ever so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed it, and hopefully I will see you again in my next video. Bye!